What's up guys, Sean Stafford here, Team Optimum Nutrition Athlete, and today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my nutrition as I prep for the Everest Marathon. The Everest Marathon is one of the toughest endurance events on the planet. 26.2 miles starting at Everest Base Camp, over five and a half thousand meters of altitude, over four and a half kilometers of descent, over three and a half kilometers of ascent on some of the toughest terrain known to man. So obviously my training has had to change quite substantially for my body to be able to handle such a new stress. And obviously with that change in training, there is gonna be a complete reworking of my nutrition. From my background in physique training, my primary focus was to stay lean and almost photo shoot ready on a year round basis. This meant that from a calorie point of view, my calories would always be around maintenance level or potentially in a slight deficit. So in terms of total calories, my body is used to functioning on around 2,300 to 2,500 calories per day. This has allowed me to maintain a relatively good level of condition as my primary focus was on being lean and not necessarily getting bigger or stronger. So in order to give this marathon challenge my absolute best, and with the increase in sort of cardiovascular condition and a more shift towards endurance training, from a calorie point of view, I needed to massively increase these. This would give me the energy I needed to train for long periods of time and make sure that my body had exactly what it needed from a calorie point of view to go the distance. To give you an example, sometimes, especially in the latter stages of my prep, when I'm out on the road and hitting those longer runs, I would sometimes burn upwards of 1500 calories per run. So what I needed to do, I needed to make sure that my nutrition was covering this calorie expenditure and that I wasn't sort of dipping into those reserves of energy from elsewhere. This massive increase in calorie need saw my average calorie intake jump up to over 3,000 to anywhere near three and a half thousand calories a day, depending on how much work I was doing in that week. One of the benefits of this increased calorie intake is that it gave me that little bit of flexibility around my eating that potentially with a focus on physique that I've had for so many years, I wasn't afforded. So having that increase in calories have given me a little bit more flexibility around the way I eat, which has led to a really nice mental break so that during this training, food and sort of being restrictive with my diet hasn't so much been an issue, so that I know mentally, once this challenge is out of the way and I return to more of a physique-based training, my body and my mind will be ready to do that. One of the biggest changes with my nutrition and taking on this challenge has been the relationship between the macronutrients within my diet, especially the relationship between carbs and fats. My protein levels have remained fairly consistent at about one gram per pound body weight throughout my preparations for both physique training and for marathon training, mainly because the protein within my diet gives me that, those key nutrients that I need to recover, not only from my weight training that I'm keeping up at the moment, but also from the increased volume of all the running and cardiovascular work needed to undertake this challenge. And the main change and the relationship between carbs and fats in my nutrition now has mainly been down to the energy systems and the dominance of each energy system used with the change in my training. When training for physique and trying to stay lean, my diet sort of historically has been very high in fat and fairly low in carbs. This was because my need for sustained energy was lower and my workouts being predominantly gym-based were shorter and of a different level of intensity. With the shift to more endurance-based training and certainly over a longer period of time, the emphasis and the importance of carbohydrate has seen a massive increase in my nutritional programming. This is especially true when out on some of the longer runs where these can take anything up to two to three hours at a time and you actually need to refuel during your training session. For this, I would rely on BCAA train and sustain and amino energy in my water bottle, but also on the carbohydrate gels and some sugary sweets and drinks to give me that immediate energy when I'm out on the road. From a sports nutrition point of view, this has also seen a huge shift around the products that I use in and around my training. So historically, I've always used a pre-workout such as Gold Standard Pre to give me that real sharp, 
boost of energy needed for a high intensity weights workout. However, with the shift to more endurance based training, I find myself using a product such as the high protein oat flapjack, not only because it gives me 20 grams of high quality protein, sort of crucial when it comes to recovery, but also because it has 40 grams of complex carbohydrates needed to help me push on and sustain my workouts for a long period of time. Also, my post-workout nutrition has changed completely too. Whereas my go-to post-workout shake would have always been HydraWay, now I'm using a half serving of the gold standard gainer. The reason for this change is not only due to the increased calories from this option, but also from the increased carbohydrates from high quality sources such as oats, peas and potatoes. I think it is also worth noting at this point that when you change your nutrition from a lower carbohydrate to a higher carbohydrate diet, you will see a small spike in your scale weight and also a drop in your visual condition. This is due to the increased uptake of glucose and glycogen within your body and the role that those two elements have when it comes to water retention. Research suggests that for every gram of glucose or glycogen that your body has, you may retain up to three to four grams of water per gram of glucose or glycogen. If you are increasing your, your carbohydrate intake by four to 500 grams, this can easily lead to a swing of one, two, maybe even three kilos on your scale weight. But do not worry, this is not an increase in fat. It is merely an increase in the amount of water that your body is storing as a direct relationship between the amount of glucose and glycogen your body has. So if you guys are looking to change up your training or even try something new, it is really important that you get a good foundation in nutrition. I'm a massive believer in a food first philosophy and making sure that your calories and your macros are right for the task at hand, but also that these are coming from natural nutrient dense sources. Also, it's definitely worth checking out that the supplements you're taking are right for you and the goals you're working towards. So if you need more information or some great advice, check out ON's new website at optimnutrition.com. So I hope you guys have found that interesting. And if you have any questions on any of the topics we've covered today, please drop them in the comments section below. I also wanna say a massive thank you to everybody for your support so far on my Run Everest challenge. And I look forward to touching base with you all when I'm back. Oh,